So what this video is going to do is it's going to walk you through uh, some uh, five different equations and you're going to work on, uh, you're going to pause the video like we've done before, uh, we did this with integers. You're going to write down the equation, try to solve it, and then uh, play the video to watch, uh, to, to watch and make sure that your work is correct. Don't just change your answer. Um, make sure also for each equation you do uh, the check step to make sure your solution works when you plug it in. So um, go ahead and pause the video now and try this first equation here. All right, so the first thing you need to do um, is recognize what operation uh, you're working with here. We're working with addition, so we're going to do the opposite, which is to subtract the 23.4. And we'll subtract that from both sides. Now remember, with subtracting decimals, we want to line up the decimals. So we, and remember, that's like getting common denominators. So we're subtracting tenths with tenths, hundredths with hundredths. So notice what I do here. I'm going to change this to adding a negative. And now I have a negative plus a negative, which means they're working together. I need to add these two numbers up. Now the convenient thing here is that to add them up, I already have the decimals lined up. I don't need any scratch work here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add on down uh, the 0, the 4, the 2, the 3, and the 5 with the 2. Um, and I'm going to get y equals 75.4. Or Sorry, that should be a y. Um, however, that should be a negative because a negative plus a negative is more negative. For our check step, we're going to take negative 75.4 and just plug it back in. Now we have this negative plus a positive. Those numbers are going to work against each other. We're going to see if that equals negative 52. Since they're working against each other, we're going to subtract uh, 75.4. I don't even need that negative there because I know my answer is going to be negative, so I'll erase that. 75.4 minus 23.4. Line up the decimals and then just subtract away, and you're going to end up with 52. Uh, and my answer is negative because I have more negative than positive. So negative 52 equals negative 52. All right, pause the video for the next problem, and uh, let's go ahead and check our solution here. All right, um, we're adding one-third, so the opposite is going to be to subtract one-third. And we're going to do that from both sides. Notice I'll write the minus one-third on the other side, so now it looks like a problem we've done before. We haven't done these like three-fourths over minus one-third. It's always written at the side. Um, so when I do subtracting of fractions, remember you need the common denominators. Uh, so we'll multiply 3 fourths by 3 over 3 and 1 third by 4 over 4. So I end up with something over 12 minus something over 12. Uh, 3 fourths becomes 9 twelfths and 1 third becomes 4 twelfths and now it's just subtracting the numerators. So j equals 5 twelfths. I'm going to plug that back in for my check step. So plug in 5 twelfths for j and I'm going to make it look exactly like the original equation, 5 twelfths, and I'm going to see if I add 1 third to that, do I end up with 3 fourths? So if I'm going to, if I'm going to figure that out, if I'm going to figure that out, obviously I need to make, put 5 twelfths and 1 third together, so I need to make 1 third common denominators with 5 twelfths, so I'll just multiply that by 4, uh, and then I get 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths, and then I'll just bring the, the right side down, and 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths is 9 twelfths. One more step, I need to simplify 9 twelfths by dividing it by 3 over 3, and then you notice it does check out, 3 fourths equals 3 fourths. Check steps, you'll notice, are going to take a little bit more time. Um, that's okay, make sure you do each step. It's one more chance for you to make sure you got the, uh, the correct rules and the math right. Uh, very vital when you're working with uh, all these small little numbers. All right, your next problem is going to be s divided by 13.21 equals 5.2. I'm going to pause the video and try that one out. So for dividing by 13.21, uh, we obviously need to multiply by 13.21. So we're multiplying decimals. Remember, I know how many decimal places my answer is going to have. So when I multiply this, I'm just going to do 1,321 times 52. Uh, and just multiply this the way that I would in fourth grade when I learned how to multiply double digits. Um, so 2 times 1321 is 2642, and then I multiply 5 times 1321, and then add those two products together, and I get, uh, this is going to be 68,692. So I'll write that over here. I know it's positive, because a positive times a positive is a positive. Um, and then I know I have three decimal places, so it's going to be 68.692. And that answer should make sense, because if I round these, 5 times 13, uh, is going to be 65, so I'm close. So all that's left now is my check step. Now, I am dividing with fractions now, so I do need to show some long division here to make sure that these work. So I shouldn't be using a calculator at all. Um, 68.692 
divided by 13.1. I'm going to multiply the inside and the outside by 100 to get rid of that decimal on the outside. So what that looks like is uh, move that 13.21, move that all the way there, move it two spaces, and I'm going to do uh, I'm going to divide by 1321 now. I'm going to kind of guess how many times uh, 1321 goes in. I'm going to guess six because maybe a thousand goes into six thousand six times. So I'll guess that. I'm going to multiply, um, and notice I end up with something bigger than 6869. So I'm going to erase that, I'm going to back it off, I'm going to make that 5. Uh, it's kind of a guess and check here. So I have my 5 that I'm now going to multiply by 1321. Uh, and when I do that, I'm going to get uh, 6605. And then subtract that. Dump up with uh, 264 and bring down the 2. And now I'm going to kind of guess 2 here to see if 1321 multiplied by 2, maybe that goes in evenly. I hope it does, because remember when I do my check step, I want it to be 5.2 if I did it right. So I, when I do this, it ends up being correct. Now remember, you actually need to do the math. Don't assume your answer is correct. Prove it to yourself. All right, next problem. Negative 6.3 times f equals 44.1. Go ahead and pause, and let's go ahead and uh, try it out. So I'm multiplying by negative 6.3. The opposite then is to divide, but be careful, don't divide by positive 6.3, divide by a negative 6.3. So my answer here is going to be negative. I'm going to put that in before I go do my long division. Now off to the side then, 44.1 goes inside, 6.3 outside. I've got to move my decimal one spot, multiply by 10 on inside and outside. Notice how I write the decimal first. All right, I'm going to guess that uh, if I think 60 into 44, eh, let's see if that goes in seven times. Just kind of a guess and check here. I'm kind of estimating. When I multiply that out, notice it comes out nice and equal. So f equals negative 7. Plug that into your check step, but I'm going to be multiplying decimals now. So negative 6.3 times 7 equals 44.1. Let's see if it works. So I'm times negative 7. Sorry, don't forget to plug the negative in. So I have a negative times a negative, so I know I have the right sign on my answer. So I want my answer to be positive. Now I'm just going to do 63 times 7, and I get 441. And notice my answer should have one decimal place. So it's 44.1 equals 44.1. That's the correct solution. Next equation, you have 7 nineteenths times y equals negative 63 nineteenths. Go ahead and try that one out. So if I'm multiplying by 7 nineteenths, the opposite would be to divide by 7 nineteenths. And notice where I write the, the other divided by, I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to make it look like a problem I've done before. I haven't done any problems where the 7 19 so I'm dividing by a fraction underneath another fraction, so I'm going to write it off to the side horizontally. So I end up with y on my left side, and then to divide fractions, you need to keep switch flip. So I'm going to keep the negative 63 19 and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal here. So switch that to multiplication, and then dividing by 7 19 is the same thing as multiplying by 19 7 And notice what we can, we can simplify here. The 19 simplifies with the 19, you can divide 63 by 7 and the 7 by 7. So I just end up with negative 9. Pretty hard to simplify that if you wait to simplify until after you've multiplied. Not only that, but if you wait to simplify until after you've multiplied, you probably had to do 63 times 19 and 19 times 7. Pretty a little bit of a long problem, and then those are huge numbers to have to figure out what to simplify by. So if I plug this back into my check step here, um, 7 19 so I know I'm multiplying fractions, so I'm just going to go ahead and make negative 9, negative 9 over 1 so that I can just multiply those out. Uh, remember multiplication, you don't need common denominators, it's just do it. So 7 times negative 9 is negative 63 over 19, checks out, there's your solution. So now you have a, uh, a series of problems uh, underneath this video for you to try. Um, work each one, check your solution, um, remember do the problem before you, do, you check it out. Make sure you try and solve it for yourself. Um, I didn't include the check steps on there, but you need to do those. Um, and whatever you don't finish uh, is homework along with the yellow uh, setting up equations and solving uh, sheet. So that, that yellow word problem sheet that they're going to give you is, uh, we'll have three problems you're going to set up equations for, and then you need to, you need to solve them. Good luck.